cities and welcome to those joining us from other places as well. I hope everyone is keeping very well. Um, obviously the church is still closed but we've had some news this week. The First Minister has announced that churches, places of worship may be allowed to open from Pam Sunday so please watch this space. We'll let you know next week we'll maybe have more of an idea of what is happening. Um, intimations, please do look at the, the website. There are links to various podcasts and videos on the, the web page. Sunday afternoon we'll be having a Zoom communion, a Zoom communion at 4 p.m. So please, everyone's welcome to, to join in and please have some, some bread or oat cake, some juice, some wine ready. Um, there will be a, an extraordinary meeting of the Kirk Session on Monday 15th of March at 7 p.m. by Zoom. And the Let's Study Group meets on Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. And all are welcome to attend. Again, the link is on the, the web page. And articles for the Cheviot magazine should be handed in by next week, by Saturday the 20th or even Sunday 21st of March. So please do get writing. But I think these are all our notices. All to worship. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God's love endures forever. And God gathers the people from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. And so let us thank the Lord for such all embracing love.
and awaken within us a sense of joy and reverence as we offer you our songs and our silence, our prayers and our praises, for you are our God. Mother in God, embrace us in your fierce love, enfold us in your protective care. Calm our anxious worrying and quieten our teeming minds. Still us, body, mind and spirit, to rest in you. Merciful God, even as we praise you, we are aware of our failures as your disciples. We take your love and acceptance for us for granted. We're often careless with our relationships, more focused on ourselves rather than on you and those around us. Forgive us and awaken our spirit of commitment and compassion so we may serve you more faithfully day by day. And friends in Christ, by grace we have been saved through faith. Know that God forgives you, and so forgive one another. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. And we say our family prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. This reading is from Numbers, Chapter 21, reading from verse 4. They travelled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom, but the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up to, out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten, can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. The Gospel reading is from John, chapter 3 and beginning at four, verse 14. Let us listen to the word of God. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men loved darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth 
comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Amen, and thanks be to God for his holy gospel.
is talking about a God who is a parent, a God who is father and mother to us. One of my favourite chapters in the Bible is Hosea, the prophet Hosea, and chapter 14, or chapter 11. And the prophet speaks of, of God's love for Israel. When Israel was a child, I loved him. It was I who taught them to walk, who took them in my arms, who drew them with bands of love and raised them to my cheek. It's God who's talking. And we can hear the maternal and the paternal imagery. Like a mother embracing a child. Like a father putting a child upon their shoulders. But the child goes their own way and makes their own choices. But God is still there. God as parent is waiting for them. And says in Hosea, how can I give you up? My heart is so overwhelmed. Regardless of what Israel has done, God is there for them and God's love is boundless. And I think that speaks of our situation as well. For too often we rely on our own strength and think that we know best. Like the prodigal son and the, the story from, from the Gospels, from Gospel of Luke. We go our own way, but God as a parent is waiting for us and still loves us and is willing to sacrifice for us. As we continue through Lent and draw closer to Holy Week, we remember the sacrifices that God has made for us in Jesus and how Jesus took up the cross and died out of love for us and for all the world at Calvary raised high on the cross and like the bronze serpent in the strange story we read from numbers jesus at that cross heals and saves us we pray that all unhappy families may be healed and reconciled but today we celebrate a mother's love and celebrate God's love for us, which embraces us. And let us respond to that love in a life of service and in a life of care. Amen.
On this Mothering Sunday, we give thanks for all mothers and for the gift of life. We pause for a moment and hold our own mothers or those who mothered us before you. We thank you for the loving gift of mothers. And of the words of Julian of Norwich, all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. We pray for all orphans, or those who've lost their mothers or a parent too soon. We pray for all who are parenting children and who feel overwhelmed or who are struggling to cope. We pray for families who have separated. We think of adoptive parents or foster parents, step parents, and those seeking to build up new relationships. And we pray for all who have longed for a child. All shall be well, all shall be well. And all manner of things shall be well. We pray for parents struggling to feed their families, for those who live with conflict or violence or fear, and those who've had to flee their homes. And we thank God for families where children are well and happy and full of life. And in this Mothering Sunday, we give thanks for our Mother Church and for our experience of being loved by a family that is as wide and broad as the human race. Creator God, we thank you for always holding us in the palm of your hand. We take a moment of silence and bring our own prayers before God. And all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Amen. Servant shall be true. 
And Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Now give me grace to follow my master and my And may the Lord, whose steadfast love is as constant as a mother's care, send us out to live and to work for others. And may the blessing of God, creator, redeemer and sustainer, be with you and be with all whom you love and those whom we're called to love, now and forevermore.